Welcome back to History of Mathematics. We are going to continue our work through Stuart Hollingdale's book, Makers of Mathematics, and talk about chapter 15, which focuses on the work of William Rowan Hamilton and George Boole. Hamilton, who we'll focus on first, was an Irish mathematician in the 19th century, notable for contributions to physics, mostly mechanics, which is kind of related to the physics that Isaac Newton created, but also did a significant amount of work in the field of algebra. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So let's switch over to the document camera and look at something called quaternions. So the quaternions are Hamilton's famous contribution to algebra. And the quaternions are a four-dimensional number system. So by the 19th century, mathematicians had become quite comfortable with the real number system, which is one-dimensional, and the complex number system, which is two-dimensional. So the question became, are there number systems of higher dimensions, for example, three dimensions or, or more? And Hamilton had initially tried to create a three-dimensional number system, but he just couldn't make it work. And what finally clicked, what he needed, so initially Hamilton tried to do this, there's your complex number system. He wanted to add this additional part and tried to make that work, but couldn't get it to go. And then he had the insight of adding this, this K part to the mix. And he was able to make a coherent system out of this. And he got the idea while he was walking to a presentation and he carved his idea into a bridge post. So this is one of the more famous instances of mathematical graffiti in the history of the world. So quaternions are four-dimensional numbers of this form. A, B, and C are real. A, B, C, and D are real. I, J, and K all have the property that if you square them, you get negative 1. So just like with the complex number system, i squared gives you negative 1. j squared and k squared also give you negative 1. I like to use this diagram to remember the products of i, j, and k. So in other words, i times j is k. That's what this is helping me remember. j times k is i. And k times i is j. Okay, now the direction of the arrows are important. If you're going with the arrows, your resulting product will be positive. If you go against the arrows, your resulting product will be negative. So if I'm going against the grain here, j times i that's going against the direction of the arrow. J times I is actually minus K. And the same thing with these other products. I times K is negative J, because that would be going against this arrow. And K times J is negative I. So the quaternions are an example of a non-commutative number system. So In fact, I might want to be a little more precise here 
and say that quaternions have non-commutative multiplication. Addition and subtraction work the exact same way they do in the real and complex number system. Okay, so when we are multiplying quaternions, we just need to know this little diagram right here. And let's just take two quick examples. We'll do 1 plus 2i minus 3j plus 4k. And we'll multiply that by 2 minus i plus j minus k. Now, all we need to do here is distribute and combine like terms. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is distribute through the 1. I'll take this 1 and distribute it through the second factor. So that'll just give me 2 minus i plus j minus k. Now I'm going to distribute through the i. Okay, so I'd have 4i. Let me line up things. Okay, now here... I got 2i times minus i. Okay, i squared is minus 1 times minus 2, so that gives me a 2. Now I got i times j, and we know from our little table up above, i times j is k. Notice I'm kind of keeping everything lined up here as I do it. Okay. Now over here, i times negative k. Now in the diagram, we can see i times k would be negative j, but there's already a negative here, so that would be j. 2j. Okay, now let's distribute through the negative 3j, so we'd get negative 6j. j times i. Now there's two negatives here, so those cancel each other out. j times i, we know from our diagram, is negative k, so negative 3k. Negative 3j squared, which we know is a positive 3. And lastly, j times k. we got two negatives there, so they cancel each other out. So this is 3jk. And we know j, k is i. And last thing to do is distribute through the 4k. So 4k times 2, that's plus 8k. k times negative i. Now we know k times i is j from the diagram up here. k times i is j. So you have negative 4j. k times j is negative i. Whoops, put my negative 4j in the wrong place there. k times j is negative i. And over here I've got negative 4k squared, and that turns into a plus 4. All right, so all I need to do here is combine like terms. And I've been careful to keep things lined up in columns to make that easier for me at the end. Okay, so it'll click, I'm going to have 11. Okay, that looks like a plus I. Let me check. That would have come from K times j, hmm, okay, so I think that should have actually been a minus, okay, so 4k times j would have given me minus 4i, so that cancels out the 4i I got right here. 
Looks like I'm left with plus 2i when all is said and done. Negative 10 plus 3. Negative 7j. 10 minus 4 plus 6k. So that is the product of these two quaternions. And if we switch the order, we would get a different result. So we've got to be very careful with the order of multiplication. Quaternions give us a non-commutative multiplication. Now you can actually perform division with quaternions as well. Let me remind you of how division goes when we're dealing with complex numbers. So if I were to take let's say this complex number 2 plus 3i and I wanted to divide it by 1 minus i. You probably remember this from your high school algebra. You multiply the top and the bottom by the so-called conjugate of the denominator here. So what we're looking at in this example is we are dividing dividing complex numbers. Okay, let's look at what we have up top. We'd have 2 plus 2i plus 3i minus 3. Okay, down on the bottom we have 1 plus i minus i plus 1. So if we combine like terms on top, I have negative 1 plus 5i over 2, because downstairs the i's would cancel each other out. So the resulting quotient of those two complex numbers would be this complex number. Here's the real part, and here's the imaginary part. Okay, so division in the quaternion system uses a very similar idea. Okay, so if you want to figure out the quotient of two complex numbers, you use the conjugate, quote unquote, of the denominator. So the conjugate quaternion, hopefully is just what you think it is, If I had a plus b i plus c j plus d k, if that was my quaternion, the conjugate is a minus b i minus c j minus d k. Okay, so in other words, with the quaternion part, you change the sign of everything. And then you would hit the top and bottom with the conjugate of the number you're dividing by. And that gives us a way to divide quaternions and get the A, B, C, and D part. So the mathematics of the quaternions is very useful in vector algebra. And it's also got a couple of other applications to matrix groups. There are several matrix groups that can be realized as quaternions. That's discussed a little bit in Chapter 15 of this book. And you can find that information right there. We are going to do one more video for this chapter on the work of George Boole. And George Boole's principal contribution is making an algebra out of set theory and also logic. So this period in mathematics sees 
a flourishing of other types of algebraic structures. We've got Hamilton creating the quaternions. We've got Boole putting rules of algebra together for sets and statements, in other words, logic. And we've also got the algebra of matrices. So the focus is more on creating new structures that follow rules that are kind of similar to the rules that arithmetic follows in most cases, but there are differences. For example, we know in ordinary arithmetic, you can switch the order when you multiply, whereas in the quaternion number system, you cannot do that anymore. You can't just switch the order when you multiply. It'll give you a different result. So a kind of generalization of the structures of algebra is happening in this period.